Despite rapidly approaching dirty word state, its crowdfunding seems to work out quite well for point and click games. This must be four or five I've covered now. Even the highest profile game of the genre that came close to being a disaster, that eventually got finished, and I promised myself I wouldn't rag on Broken Age for one, so let's move swiftly on. Today's hard to pronounce game is Demetrios, the big cynical adventure, and comes to us from Cowcat, whose Kickstarter doubled its goal, well done them, by promising point and click adventure game, cynical humour, handcrafted HDR in comic book slash Disney style. Well, they got half of that last part right. I don't know if I would have shown interest in this based on the screenshots available, but they offered to send me a review code and I said yes, so I guess we'll never know. See, you can declare you got a free review copy without making your script clumsy and awkward. Um, well, let's start by digging into the story. We meet antique dealer and professional slob Bjorn Thonin, having come down with a wee case of the not at all sobers. He wanders home and falls down unconscious. Probably a normal occurrence, but he's interrupted by a phone call warning he's in danger. He brushes it off and goes back to sleep. Until he's interrupted by someone kicking a trash bag in his home and shouting loudly, which you may recognise from Sun Tzu's The Opposite of Stealth. As he investigates, someone hits him over the head. When Bjorn comes to the next day, he's chastised by his friend Tom for not meeting him that morning, except now he'll have a good excuse, and finds that his home has been ransacked. But the only thing that's missing is a tablet from a statue. What follows is a tale of crime, conspiracy, and eating food off the floor because the main character is an idiot. Now, before you accuse me of hyperbolizing or not knowing what I'm talking about, the term idiot used to refer to people with an IQ below 30. I'm pretty sure I'm using that term correctly. Other games might have naive, gullible, or sheltered characters, but Bjorn is like the inbred cousin of Rufus from Deponia. That's the level we're talking here, and I feel that's worth noting up front. I don't want to appear overly judgmental or anything, but I doubt he could count to 10 if he was naked and had 12 dicks. That's probably going to affect whether or not you'll want to play as him for the touted 8-12 to 12 hours of gameplay. Incidentally, Steam tells me I finished it in 6, and I wasn't even going quickly. Anyway, the fact remains, your main character would probably fail his IQ test, which is technically impossible, except he would eat it before he got the chance. His dumbassery manifests itself in different ways. Saying incredibly stupid and sometimes obviously offensive things, then acting insulted when people call him out on it, gets old quickly. But there's the sequence later on where he has to find and play shapes into holes, you know, Babby's first Tetris kind of thing. Bjorn misses out the whole match up the shapes gimmick and shoves all the pieces in the wrong holes only to have it work anyway. That one gave me a chuckle. And whilst a lot of the game's humour fell flat for me, there was the odd instance of something so daft I couldn't help but enjoy it. Like how this plane takes off and lands, or the way this pyramid was built. That's where the game not taking itself seriously really helps. Another benefit from this bugger it nature is the numerous game over screens. I'm wondering if there's a way to get a game over in every single scene, they are that numerous. Gameplay wise, they're inconsequential. Do the thing, game over, straight back to where you were. You usually have to deliberately do something incredibly stupid to trigger one of these in the first place, like photocopy your arse in a police station. So that works for me in a comedy themed, sorry, cynical themed game, apparently. Sorry, I have no idea where that subtitle comes into it. Maybe the confused cynical for gross out. Let's move on to the visuals. I've tried to remain positive about the artwork, but it's only going to go so far. Backgrounds are quite good, even if they lean more toward the comic book side of the Disney comic book style that was promised. Don't know why this bothers me so much, it's not something they can really lie about when they're showing screenshots, but for a bit of a comparison, here's a Disney background. Here's a Demetrios background. Difference. That said, I prefer the comic book style cutscenes in this game to those in, say, A New Beginning. Might be the comedic tone, the shifting camera, certain effects matching up nicely to the action, or it might be the lack of awful voice acting. Because there is none. That was a 10,000 euro goal, sadly. Well, none isn't accurate either. Talking segments will have a wee noise that plays while it prints out all the text, and you'll also get a bunch of scene-appropriate sound effects, like a section where you have to find something that tastes of coconut. So your character starts licking everything. Idiot. Given that none of them taste good and several of them are literally trash, you get this lovely throwing up sound again and again and again. It was a bit much. And that was not the only time it was used. Another weird sound effect related shenanigan is the couple of times a character cries because that kicks off a really long sound effect, which continues playing after the line of dialogue that triggered it has passed, not even leaving the conversation stops it. Speaking of conversations, that's a weird phrase, the artwork for people ranges from passable to downright ugly. There's only two female characters, not counting this one here with no name that's completely covered up, and neither of them look right. It's hard to pin down exactly what I dislike about their look, but it might might be the fact that this head here has the same shape as a pair of Y fronts. Disney was not the right influence to cite here, but that's not the only influence they list. They mention the humour of Discworld, better that than the puzzle design, Phoenix Wright for first person investigations, and Gabriel Knight for comic cutscenes, character heads, dialogues. Yep, fair enough actually, that's hard to argue those points. 
And then there's Broken Sword. When I think of Charles Cecil's classic, I think of smooth and detailed animations, suspiciously expensive globetrotting antics, ancient conspiracies, and more one-liners than a patent lawyer has any right to deliver. If I'm being generous, Dimitrios has two of those. I'm refusing to count a 10 minute jaunt to a German cemetery. Now, if I may end on some positives, the interface might seem strange at first because there's no on-screen avatar. Except once, which the game blatantly lampshades in one of its funnier moments. Don't worry, we're not going into hidden object territory here. Except for maybe the game's hint system. You find cookies hidden throughout the game, which you eat to get hints. It sounds like a neat system on paper, and hunting down cookies spoke to the completionist in me, especially when you can get a readout of how many cookies you've found in each scene, but it's not perfect. I find myself getting stuck, and given that hint systems generally go from vague to specific, and one cookie equals one hint, I'd have to waste a few cookies getting past all the information I already knew. If you do use this system, try everything you get hinted towards before eating another cookie. Or comb the environment for more cookies, there's like 140 of them. They're hidden, but they're there. The game doesn't so much poke the fourth wall as it does outright deny its existence, so it sees no problem of having Bjorn feeling sick after eating too many cookies, and that would be a positive note of funny if it didn't lead to them using that goddamn vomit sound effect again. Making your current objective easy to see, I do like. That's something you can easily lose if you put the game down for any length of time. And better than that, there seems to be a full set of keyboard shortcuts. Inventory, top bar, object highlighting, all with their own shortcuts. Well done there. And if you don't like hints, subjective marking, object highlighting, or any combination thereof, you can disable them. Whilst I did say this game wasn't leaning towards hidden object territory, there are a bunch of mini games as part of the main story. Claw machine, horse races, fishing shows up more than once, and there's very little to them. Then again, I've never seen much more done with a claw machine, and I really can't see them taking up more than 10 minutes each. They're not the worst part of the game, but an option to skip them would be nice. I don't think that much of this game, in fact I definitely don't think much of this game, let's be honest here. It's a bit of a mess, but I recognise things it's done right. They wanted death scenes for a comedic effect, but by plonking you right back where you were afterwards, they don't hinder gameplay. They have actual puzzles in here, one time I had to use maths and everything. It's not the main focus, not even by half, probably not even a quarter, but it's more than we get most of the time. I like to think of point and click games as brain teasers with story, so that ticks a box for me. There's keyboard shortcuts for everything, including during the mini games, and even Tout's gamepad support. Didn't use it myself, so I don't know how well it's done, but I'm not going to sniff out an extra option. Overall, it comes across as an amateur effort, which isn't the impression you want your game to give. It also crashed a few times with out of memory errors, but that was on pre-release builds a couple of months before release. Besides, if this were a big AAA title going out on consoles, physical media, that kind of thing, I'd tell you to watch out for those in the full game rather than hope for a day one patch. As a digitally distributed game, there's still time to iron out a few things before release. Which, if I've done this right, is a few days after this video goes up. And if you want to be completely specific, it releases on May 31st. If you're looking for a game that doesn't take itself seriously to the point of being completely and utterly daft, has a bunch of mini games and fetch quests, some odd writing, and clearly isn't a big budget effort, you might get something out of this. That and you can ram through it for a whole bunch of chivos. Mechanically, it's fairly solid, if not entirely what we're used to, but the writing lets it down. A game not taking itself seriously is fine, sometimes great actually, but that doesn't mean you can just throw the kitchen sink in there. Maybe something got lost in translation, I'm not sure. It sounds pretty insulting to say you need to lower your standards to enjoy this, but it was made by what I suspect is a single person for a mere 4,000 euros. That's worth bearing in mind if you're feeling judgmental. And if you're at all interested, they've made the first chapter available for free in downloadable and even browser forms. It's essentially shareware and quite the bold move one can only applaud the developer for doing. From there, you can figure out if Dimitrios is worth your time. I have a hard time recommending this one, but luckily you can play a chunk of it yourself and find out that way.